Welcome back everyone and yes this is the video I've been waiting to do. This is a scary look at what could happen at the markets and I'm telling you by the end of this video it's going to have you scratching your head thinking what's going on. We're talking statistics, we're talking possible stock market crashes. A lot of information is going to come to you in this video and I, I have to tell you I think it's going to be one of the better videos we put out here dealing with what to expect over the next 6 to 12 months and the reasoning behind it. Now, before we get into it and all this, make sure you do take advantage of the Moo Moo link down below. Get yourself five free stocks worth up to 2,000 a piece, $50 cash reward coupon, all for depositing $100. You want a free share of Tesla or EXP, make sure you put five grand in there. You'll get 15 free stocks worth up to 2,000 a piece plus that $50 cash reward. And of course, if you haven't done the the Weeble, this is absolutely incredible. Any deposit, a dollar will get you up to 12 free stocks worth up to 30,600. And they're open in the UK, so take advantage of it. If you're over in the UK as well, see what they're offering. And come on over to the Patreon, see what we have in the portfolio. We did some buys and sells. I'm gonna be doing more most likely today. Folks, this is your opportunity to link down below. Now let's get into this. This is this is something else. So this article comes out and I, I used to, for those that don't know, before I get into the article, I was a statistics teacher back when I was an educator, so, and I used to love that class. Now, moving forward, there's a lot of statistical analysis done in the stock market. This video is going to relate to some of the absolute outstanding information that this author put out there in this article, and I want to go over it a little bit because then I did a little of my own research to show you exactly what they're talking about in a little bit easier visual terms to check it out. All right, so as we get into it, for those that like the dual y-axis chart, so they get into R-squared, which shows you the variation between different things. And what they're showing you here is the S&P 500 and the Fed net liquidity. And this is how highly correlated they are. They pick the years between 2008 to 2022. Don't worry, guys. It's going to get simpler here in a second. But was a 0.841, one being a total correlation between the two. You can explain it. Uh, but they don't see that. You got 0.841, which is absolutely very, very, very high. They are super strong correlated. According to Real Vision, and, and they're using a the data, that means 84% of the observed weekly variation in the S&P 500. The variation in the S&P 500 could be what? That's right, explained by the Fed net liquidity. So if you look at the Fed net liquidity, you can kind of almost predict with that 0.841 uh, R squared, how the, the S and P 500 will go. Right. All right. So the bond market did not enjoy that, which was to me a little bit disappointing. We were looking for some better things there, but we'll see it. Uh, now, as we get down here, they talk about this while many are debating if 30 to 35 times earnings or seven to 40 times sales for mega caps is expensive, which I think they're being a little sar sarcastic here because we know it is, uh, the answer and opinion lies with, with what the fed's going to do. All right, so if the Fed decides to make money cheap again, we might see everything, the whole ocean rises, right? But that got me thinking after I got looking at that. And I said, I totally understood what they're saying. They looked at the data over many, many, many years and came back and said, look, they are so strongly correlated. We can almost predict what's going to happen to the S&P 500 based on the Fed net liquidity. Now, with that being said, what's the first question that pops in my mind? Where is the Fed net liquidity now? And that only took a little bit of research for me to get out there and find a chart that makes up to what we need to look at which is this one and this is what scared me now i'm going to show you this this chart here is a little out of date because this goes back to i uh, believe march 2023 so this is a little out of date but i'll show you something else after this now you can see you can almost use this as a prediction tool of what you think's going to happen when you have quantitative easing, you have Fed injecting money, you can expect the markets to run. But when you see uh, the Fed starting to tighten up a little bit and that comes out, you can almost expect the market, and it looks like a little bit of lagging from the market here to go down. But then all of a sudden you have more money going in, the market rallies back up. They kind of topped off together. Then you see them moving almost in tandem of uh, what they're doing for the most part. Then you see a separation in March there, but we know we ended up seeing more rally in the S&P 500 and the actual Fed pulling money out, so it has me a little bit nervous. Now, 
Uh, take a look at this, the S&P performance in the Fed net quantitative easing since the pandemic began. And you can go all the way back there and see what happens when the quantitative easing's there. The markets follow very closely. When the money starts to drain out of that in terms of liquidity, you saw what the market did. So keep an eye on this. We had some money being pumped into the markets because of the banking situation. We know that backstop is still there. But if you follow this, this will give you, and everybody always says to me, what's the one thing I can follow really to gauge how the stock market's going to do? Well, my answer to you, watch the Fed, watch the liquidity in there. We have a lot of things you can follow, the valuations, all these other things. But at the end of the day, if you just follow the Fed and the liquidity and the net quantitative easing, net quantitative tightening, all that stuff, follow it. I just showed you a lot of things going on out there, some correlation uh, that are just absolutely crazy. Now, how much money, what happened out there for those following along with I don't know if you guys have been following this, but the Treasury out there borrowing money, getting their money back up to date. And eh, where's the one I wanted to do right here? Borrowing from the public. I even highlighted it there. This was, uh, I believe, June. This is the last month. So remember when some of the Treasuries got hammered down because the, the Treasury was doing their thing? $823 billion borrowed from the public. And so when you saw a little downward pressure on that, now you know. Current fiscal to date, $1.1 trillion. How much do they need for the year? Uh, $1.6 trillion. So they've already borrowed uh, $1.1. They only need another $500 billion to finish out this year. And they did $800 billion in June. So now you got July. You got basically July all the way up. So you got seven months for that to get done. So I'm not panicking about the Treasury anymore. Absolutely crushing it. I think they'll do it slow and steady for what they need to do to build up. And then, of course, they're back on normal footing, I believe, for next year. I did want to bring this up for those who are following along. Now, watching that, the Treasury, continuing with a big Treasury video here. You can see what's going on, of course. Now, as we take a look at what should happen, we have a 98% chance when the Fed meets next week. And the idea is that the Fed will raise rates there. I'm going to take my picture off here so you can see the next one. And during the September meeting, when everybody thinks, oh, we need to really see the Fed get aggressive, now it's down to 13%. In other words, most of the markets out there believe they're going to take a wait and see attitude. So basically in seven weeks, the big question comes, uh, are they just going to watch? And the answer most likely is yes at this point. But then 13 weeks from today, we see this to me is the main one. Is this the official pause? Because if they don't raise rates at this meeting in November, I believe it's over. Uh, and then, of course, the rate, per, uh, the percentage continue to drop of the odds of them doing it. And then you get into next year and all of a sudden they start to really go down. And I told you March is when I believe the first major cut will come. Uh, and I still believe that could be true. March or before is my timeline. And then as you continue out there, you get to the end of the year and you can see that they are going to be in the threes by the end of next year. So for those getting into long dated uh, treasuries and bonds and stuff now, we could see a very nice return as we go forward. And I did show you the chart in the last video, which to me was absolutely huge of the 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 gains we can expect and I, I think it was like 7% for long dated seven or the 10 to 30 year range, of course. And that's only in three months. And then what was it? Six months, it was 10%. And then it was 12 to 13% over the 12 months after the last rate hike. So if the rate hike is this one and it is it, and right now percentages are saying it is, if we load up for this one, this rate hike, we get in there, we load the boat, then all of a sudden, we find out later that it was the last one. We should be able to gain from that moment up to three months, 90 days away, about 7% based on historical data. From six months out, we should be up about 12%. Now, remember, or 10%, 10 a little over 10%. I'm going to be in triple leverage. And so I don't want seven. I want 20-something percent in 90 days. I want 30-something uh, percent over six months. And by the time we get all the way up, to the end, we should be close to 40%, and that's in 12 months. Now, I believe if we are on that ultimate pause and bad things happen from the, the Fed over tightening and causes a, a very bad situation in the markets, the economy, and everything, 
which I think could happen here and within the next 12 months, well then watch out because then the Fed has to do an aggressive cutting. And if they do aggressive cutting, you could see TMF go through the roof. And of course, a lot of the non-leveraged ones such as TLT going through the roof as well. For those who want even less rich risk than TLT, the, the 20 year plus, Go with the seven to 10 year. You can take a look at that one. There's an ETF out there. It does not move quite as much as a 20 year plus. So you can see what's going on, take advantage of it and just have a field day. Right now we're watching a lot of things happening, but I wanted to bring that information to you. Let me know down below. Did you like these kind of fundamentals and technical stuff? And let me know if you do. Well, then I can do a little bit more, but I thought this was an eye-opening video, uh, especially with some of this data. Folks, if you haven't done it, come on over to the Patreon. You can see how I'm going to try to make bank. This is, this is some big stuff, and of course, there's a lot of research that goes into it, and I would appreciate your support to help me out with this. To do that, you can join here on YouTube as a channel member or over at the Patreon where you can get, watch my portfolios, be a part of my private Discord, and I can let you know everything I'm buying and selling as I do it. It's just a good way to support the channel and be around a lot of like-minded individuals. Now, take advantage of the Moomoo stocks down below and the Weeble ones. I appreciate you stopping by. Well, let's get out there and make some money.